Okay, hello grade teens. I'm going to make a video for you guys running through the first paper that you guys wrote last term and then you can go through it on your own time. I'm going to give you a hard copy of this question paper um, when I see you guys again. So it's paper one and it was about electrostatics and electric circuits. Okay, multiple choice. They say the name of the process where a neutral object is charged by bringing it in contact with a charged object. Okay, so we have different ways to processe, acht processe, voorwerpen te laai en wanneer het is dier hulle in contact te bring met een geluide voorwerp noem ons het contact of contact in Engels. Now for 1.2 they say two spheres, one with a charge of positive 2 coulomb and one with an unknown charge is brought in contact with one another. After the spheres are brought together um, with each other, dan dan na is die lading op elk een negatief 0.5. En dan vraag ek vir die oorspronkelijke lading op sfeer B. So we know that the charge of A was positive 2. We don't know the charge of B, but when they were divided by 2, we know the final charge. So I can infill what I get. I get the one is positive 2. Here. The one is minus 0.5. Okay, so now I multiply by 2 on both sides. So then I have 2 plus Q, the unknown value, is equal to negative 1. I carry this negative Ach, this 2 over and it becomes negative 2. So this one must be negative 3 coulomb and that is D. And then by 3 cellen, Nora had a neutral glass stof gefrijwoord met a neutral wool lab. Um, is the glass stof positive geloi? Um, wat er van die volgende ladings is waar? Ok, nou dit is makkelijk om onmiddellijk see in D uit te skakel, because protons can't be transferred, only electrons can be transferred. Okay, and then when we look at the fact that the glass rod has become positive, then you have to know that means the glass rod has lost electrons. So met ander woorde, die elektrone is van die glasstof na die wolap toe oorgedra. Okay, and those were the short questions. Then for question two, Sê hulle vir jou die twee identiese sfeere met verskillende ladings wat op geïsoleerde staanders geplaas, soos in die skates. Sal die twee sfeere mekaar aantrek of afstoot? Geer hier vir jou antwoord. So they will attract one another. And my reason will be opposite charges. Attract. The memo for this is also already on your classroom. Um, so you can go and work through that as well. Dan vir die wet van behoud van lading, omdat dit is in enige geïsoleerde stelsel, is bly die net, net toe lading behou, gedurende die contact. Ok, for 2.3, they say the two spheres are brought in contact with each other and then placed back in their original positions. Calculate the new charge on each sphere. So dit is die ene wat ek nou net ook vele gewaas het. 2.3 Ki A plus Ki B gedeel door 2 geef vir die finale lading, onthou jou Formule is very belangrijk. And I'm going to keep these in nanocoulomb. So we have 4 nanocoulomb minus 6 nanocoulomb divided by 2, which gives me a final charge of negative 1 nanocoulomb. If you wanted to, you could have done this for each value. And then this one would have been negative 9, or negative 1 times 10 to the power of negative 9. Dan vraag vir jou, bereken die aantal elektrone wat oorgedra is. So for that you have to say, delta Q is equal to the final minus the initial. And you can choose either one of the spheres. So ek gaan somme werk met die eerste ene, met die positief 4. And for this one, I'm gonna actually put it into nanocoulomb. So jy moet ondou, Nanocoulomb, nanocoulomb is mol 10 to the mach min 9. So the final charge is the same on both, I get it from there. Minus, in die oorspronkelijke lading van die is 4 mol 10 to the mach min 9. So ons het minus 1 minus 4 mol 10 to the mach min 9, so dit is minus 5. 
wat dient door die mag met 9 kolom wat oorgedra is. Als jy gewerk het met die ander sweer, so jy gekryd positief 5, maar dit kom op die selde ding neer. And then you have this, which is on your formula sheet. And for that one, you just say it's the charges transferred, but I'm not going to work with signs. So I stel dan net positieve getale in. Daar ene kom van jou formule blad af, dit is die lading van 1 elektron. Oopsie. En dan krijg jy 3,125 mol met 10 tot die macht 10 elektrone. Ok. Goed, vir vraag 3 het hulle vir jou eerst gesê, gee oomse wet en woorde, julle kan weer mooi na omgaan kyk, en dan sê ek vir julle complete the following statement by filling in the correct words. Resistors in parallel are known as blank dividers, while resistors in serie are known as blank dividers. So onthou, in parallel is hulle potentiaal verskil. So they're potential difference dividers, and in series they are known as current dividers, so stroomverdeners. Want in series, ek het hulle nou verkeerd omgeskryf, nee. Sorry guys, it's the other way around. In parallel, they are known as current dividers. And in series, they are known as potential difference dividers. Here we go. Okay. Then I give you the stream on the other and then I give you as S2 is, then is the lesson on the ammeter 0.5 ampere. Dan vraag vir jou nog een definitie van stroomsterkte, jylle kan omweer gaan kyk. En dan vir 3.3.2 vraag vir jou bereken die weerstand van x. Ok, so, for that, I'm first going to calculate the total resistance by saying it is the potential difference divided by the current. So the total potential difference divided by the total current flowing through it. So die totale potential verskil van die stroombaan is 12 en die leesing op die ammeter is 0,5 so ons totale weerstand is 24 ohm meaning that because these two are in series with one another they need to add up to 24 so to get the resistance of x we're just going to say it's the 24 minus the 8 which is 16 ohm Okay, on to the last question. Daar gee ek vir die stroombaan en ek sê vir jou, ons het twee resistors wat in parallel is, een is 2 ohm en een is 4 ohm, en dan is al een derde resistor wat nie saam met hulle in parallel is nie, hy is ook 4 ohm, en die ammeter en die draade en alles het weglaadbare weerstand, die totale potentiaal verskil van die batterij is 12 volt, en dan vraag ek eerst vir jou, vir my potentiaal verskil te definieer. Ek gaan vandag die definities met julle op die video doen nie, julle kan hulle maar net gaan lees op die memo van julle handboeken. Dan vraag vir jou, wat sal die potentiaal verskil van elke cel wees? Nou, onthou, in die batterij is al verskillende cellen. So, hier die ene het drie cellen, so elk een van hulle moet die potentiaal verskil van vier volt sê. Then I'll ask you for the total resistance of the circuit. So for that, I'm going to first calculate the resistance of this part of the circuit. I call this um, R parallel. For that, I say it's 1 over, remember to write down your formula first. So 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4, and this gives me 3 over 4. Want out dit is 1 op R parallel, met ander woorde, R parallel gaan wees 4 op 3, wat ons skryf as 1,33 ohm. Meaning that this part of the circuit has a resistance of 1,33 ohm. But that's not the total resistance, the total resistance will be the 1,33 plus this 4, because that 4 is in series with it, 
att man då har stig värstande en series med kvar och ställer eller nej på med kvar. Så det är totala värstand från i de strömbanes 5,33. Then I ask you for the reading on A1. Now A1 measures the total current. So I'm going to say 0.4 for the reading on A1 is I total will be V total divided by R total. So the total potential for school is 12. The total weerstand that is on net uitgewerkt is 5,33. So the total stream bond, or the total stream strength, can 2.25 amperes. Okay. Now I ask you for the reading on voltmeter one. Now on the voltmeter one is E by the parallel voltage. So there's more than one way to do this. You can either go and calculate the potential difference being spent on that resistor, and then just subtract that from 12. Or you can say we do know the resistance of that part of the circuit. So in that part of the circuit, we know that the resistance is 1,33. So I'm going to say V parallel is equal to I total because the total current flows through it in total. I split up this and I point in my owner's end. But in total, the whole stream bond, ach the whole stream starts to the other side of the stream bond. And I'm going to net look at the parallel deal. So the total stream bond is 2,25 in the weerstand of the stick is 1,33. Which gives me 2,99. That's not because we have been rounded. If we have not been rounded, we would have 3 volts. Okay, but like I said, the other way to do it is to work with the potential difference through the 4 ohm. So then you can say e mol r, but 2,25 is mol met 4, and that gives you 9, and then you say as 9 volts, op the other side, 